Now you ask, what is the purpose of all of this information about how the different parts of the brain works? Well, what we're going to do today is to demonstrate how uh, a student or a pair of students can demonstrate the uh, behavioral and emotional aspects of what it must be like to have this operation. When we divide these two hemispheres, as in the case of the split brain patient, we have a unique opportunity to interact with only one hemisphere at a time. In the case of the patient, uh, both hemispheres are in, of course, the same person, but in our simulation, each hemisphere will be represented by a different person. Now, the differences between the two hemispheres is as important as uh, the procedure for dividing the two hemispheres. The main reason we see these unusual behavioral uh, deficits is because of the difference between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. In most people, uh, including all right-handed people and most left-handed people, the language, as we've seen in the video so far, is in the left hemisphere. The language in the Broca's area and the Wernicke's area help the person to understand language and to use language in everyday life. The right hemisphere does not have language or at least very little understanding of language. That makes a, a great deal of difference between the two hemispheres. Language is the root of being able to understand logic, sequence, number, uh, reasoning, most of the reasoning that we use. While the right hemisphere has none of these things, it does have nonverbal imagery. It has the ability to understand visual spatial difficulties, but it has difficulty in expressing itself in language. Next, we'll show you two students who have volunteered to demonstrate a simulation that we usually use in class to illustrate some of the problems that a split brain patient might have. Now, this, of course, is a simulation, and using two students to, to represent the two sides of the brain. And uh, the purpose of this is to let people in the class to sort of empathize with some of the frustrations and difficulties that a student or a person might have who had, who's had the operation. Now try to imagine that you're looking at the right and left hand of one person. No, I feel nothing. You mean it's, it's numb yet? Yeah, it's, it's pretty numb. So it wouldn't matter if I did this. Uh, okay. Okay, I understand. I'd appreciate it if you didn't, oh, but I, I wouldn't do it. Okay. Now try to imagine that you're looking at the right and left hand of one person. Many of these difficulties that the split brain patient has at the first 
uh, in the first few months of their operation go away after a number of months. Uh, so we're really illustrating some of the initial behavioral difficulties of the split brain patient. And even these are only obvious in the uh, case of special testing that we're demonstrating here. You know what that is? It's a fear. Now reach out with your right hand and pick it up. Pick up that thing that I just put in your hand. Ready? Yeah. I'm gonna put something in your hand. You know what that is? No. Do you know what it is? No. Go ahead and use it. Have you idea what it is? Yeah. What is it? A lot of it. I'm gonna put something in your hand. Alright. You know what that is? Yeah. There's your mask on. Reach out with your left hand, fill three objects, and pick up the correct object. Notice the difference between the right and left hands as they attempt these different tasks. The right hand, which is uh, controlled by the left hemisphere, is not as adept at visual spatial tasks such as uh, assembling a, a block design from a model. Whereas the left hand is better at this and is frustrated by the right hand's difficulty in uh, assisting it. Blocks and use all nine to make this effect this picture right here. Work as quickly as you can. Okay. I can't do this. I'm no good at this. I hate this. Are you satisfied? So what is the purpose of all of these demonstrations and simulations? Well, we're not able to, in an online class, actually demonstrate or do these simulations because students are not present all at one time. The purpose of this uh, brief video demonstration is to illustrate what we would be doing in a regular classroom. The students in the regular classroom would actually participate in the simulation and get the opportunity. I would encourage you to uh, find a friend, find a family member, and to practice with this simulation yourself to see the kinds of difficulties that you will encounter uh, when trying to do tasks. And imagine if you were that one person who had had the split brain operation and the difficulties that they might encounter.